It's time for Remodel Revolution. And now, an award-winning contractor with over 40 years experience. Here is Alex Guthrie. Welcome to another episode of Remodel Revolution. We're so glad you could be here with us today. We hope you're having a great day. We're broadcasting from the world headquarters of Remodel Revolution, deep in the heart of Texas, where we're all proud to be from. Today, I have my co-host, and she's young, she's beautiful, she's smarter than the average old dude, and better looking, Miss Amber Teague. Hello, Miss Amber. Hello. How are I'm you? Back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here today. Thank How you. How are you? I'm doing good. It's been too long. Is it fall yet? Yeah, it's falling. <laughs> it's falling. <laughs> I hope it's falling because I'm tired of being hot. <laughs> hey, today's show is going to be really a lot of fun. If you're looking for a project for the long, cold, upcoming winter, which I know uh, if you're in Texas right now, you go, why is he talking about winter? A, we hardly have one, and B, eh. But, hey, it is the fall, and uh, it is going to get cold. So we're going to talk to... Cliff Barros from IBHS with the Fortified Building Program. We've talked to them before, but uh, I think it's a really important and educational subject. If you have projects you want to do during the winter, this is a good one because you're going to do it in your attic. So uh, we're going to talk to Chris in a little bit. And also, are you tired of those knee-killing stairs? Um, I'll tell you what, the older you get, the less you're going to like them. Maybe you should consider an elevator. Uh, there's also all kinds of other devices you can get. We're going to visit with Mike McGrath with Elevating Systems of Dallas, and we're going to talk about elevators today. And Amber and I have a, are going to have a product discussion that you don't want to miss, and then we're going to talk 2020 trends and much, much more. So uh, welcome, and, and let's first, as always, do our remodeler's tip. Seasons are changing, and here's a short to-do list. Now, I do this, I like to do this every year to kind of remind you of a few things. These are just a, a few items, and Amber's going to help me out here, to help you get ready. Because, look, I mean, we all have to deal with it. I have to deal with it. And the, my wife says, um, there's going to be a big freeze coming tomorrow. And do you have the faucet covers ready? And I'm like, no, where are they? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta run to the store. <laughs> and so, uh, number one on my list is go find those faucet covers. Uh, buy some if you need them or just find them and put them by the faucet outside and get ready to put them on. Because, you know, it's not going to be too long uh, till you need them. It's usually when you don't expect to have to use them. Also, have some rock salt ready. Go get you a, a, a bag of rock salt. Put it. I don't know, in the closet or in, in the where the coat closet is by the front door or under the kitchen sink or somewhere so that if we happen to have some ice or if you live in part of the country where you're going to have some ice or snow, it snowed three feet last week in part of the, three feet. Mm. My goodness. Um, have some of that rock salt ready in case you need to chunk it out there on the sidewalk so you don't. I have this story about my grandmother one time and and I, uh, she kind of raised me. I lived in her house, and she walked out one. I got up one morning to go down and have breakfast, and I hear this this uh, voice going, Alex, <laughs> Alex. And I went out there, and bless her heart, the poor thing had walked out to get the paper, slipped on the ice, and fell down and broke her, her wrist oh. and couldn't get up. It happens, so be ready because sometimes you just don't know when it's going to happen. Mm. Also, you need to make sure and get your heating system tuned and checked for potential gas and carbon monoxide leaks. Do it now because if you wait till uh, a cold front's coming in, the AC guys are going to be really busy doing it for other people. So go ahead and do that now. Or if you're having your AC system checked for other reasons or, or service, make sure they go through that part of it as well. Another thing that is super important for those of you that like to burn fires in your chimney, your chimney has become a really um, fun place for all the little critters this summer to build nests if you don't have a chimney cap on it. So make sure that it's cleared out. Make sure your damper inside is working and that it, if you're running your air conditioner or your heat and you don't have a fire going, make sure the damper's closed. But some dampers, as they get older, they 
won't work as, uh, correctly. So make sure everything's working properly. And the most important thing is that if you burn wood in your fireplace, make sure that you have the soot cleaned off out of your chimney because soot is very, very flammable. And you, that's uh, a lot of people get in trouble with that every year. So make sure and get that done. Call a chimney cleaner, don't try and do it yourself. It's a nasty, messy uh, project. Make sure and check, and when he's doing it, make sure and have him check the spark arrestor. That's the little screen thing that's on top of your chimney. And what that does is when you're burning a fire and those big old sparks are going up, that, that little screen kind of knocks them down and keeps them from landing on your roof or in a tree or somewhere you really don't want them. Um, okay, if you uh, hear of a, of a freeze coming, make sure and disconnect your hoses. You should just do that anyway, just so you don't forget. If your hose is hooked up and it's got water in it and it's hooked up to the uh, faucet, on the outside wall and it all freezes hard, guess what? You get to replace the faucet. <laughs> and that's never fun. Okay, uh, some a couple of other things that I like to make sure, and, and this, these are things I have my clients do. Check your yard or have your yard service check for hanging and damaged limbs in your trees. Uh, one of the first things that happens when we have a big windy, particularly if we have an ice storm uh, event, is those loose or damaged limbs, the ones that are just barely hanging by a thread, they come flying off the tree and guess where they go? Right on your roof and they knock a hole in it. So make sure and get that. And plus, look, if you're just walking out in the yard and one of them falls, it could be super, super dangerous. Don't forget the furry family. Most of us have them. And especially if you have uh, pets that are outside pets only. Clean out their doghouse, get them ready for the winter. Now, we used to, when I was a kid, the best our dog got was every now and then we would put a clip-on light bulb in the, <laughs> in the dog. Back then, when I was a kid, them dogs didn't come inside that house. Mama <laughs> wouldn't have it. So they either got the garage or they got a nice warm light bulb. Do, you know, just make sure your pets are ready and, and their area is ready so that they can get warm and out of the weather if necessary. Uh, what else do you, what do I miss? I miss something for I sure. I think you're good. I would only, really? uh, yeah, I mean the, the salt on uh, the ground though, we have to care about our cowboy boots, remember salt. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 the salt will ruin your cowboy boots in uh -huh. Texas. <laughs> oh man, I didn't know that. What does it, what, the leather? Yeah, the this uh, salt with the water will will stain the cowboy boots. So oh my keep gosh. that in mind. <laughs> Man, let, let's not forget that. <laughs> so um, I asked Amber to do a product review for us today, and this is brought to us by Glam Fire Fireplaces. Now, if you go to Amber's website, unlacquered. dot com. dot com. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Glamfire is a, a product that's new to our area, basically new. Am Amber's going to tell us about Glamfire for about 30 seconds, and she's going to go into a product review. Yeah, so uh, Glamfire is a uh, fireplace and fire pit brand from Portugal that I am able to represent here in Texas. And um, the product today I'm I'm talking about is from another brand that I have called Artos and uh, we're going to talk about some towel warmers or towel dryers. Towel warmers like <laughs> we all need one. Yeah. yeah so we're talking about the colder <laughs> weather and um, although colder weather here isn't as cold as other places it's still uncomfortable in the mornings when we're trying to Hey wake a up. warm <laughs> towel is a warm towel whether it's cold or hot. So something that's happening now is is the term is changing from towel warmer to towel dryer because in Texas here, uh, the further south you get, especially down in Houston, um, we have very humid weather. So our bathrooms that are, they're humid already, and then we get hot air in there and, and water, then uh, everything is just kind of 
muggy. A towel dryer. Yes. So the towel dryer is very needed. You know, it, with that name, I, I guess it, it kind of diversifies the whole deal. So yeah, you can put so other it, stuff on there and dry it. Yes. What so else could you put on there and dry? <laughs> we also recommend towel dryers <laughs> in laundry room settings. Okay. Uh, they're good for delicates and um, any sort of uh huh. Steps. Slinky Th attire. Th things you can things you can see through. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> or if you're young like me and hate uh, ironing, you can uh, throw your shirt over that and <laughs> without I having. Didn't, to I don't think you had to iron anymore. I thought that they made things that uh, because I don't. You, you know? don't. No, it's not part of my. Uh, I just thought it was. A, you know, history. That was a historical <laughs> thing. So, yeah. So, delicates are really great to dry on a towel dryer. And uh, it's a good add-on to a laundry room if you are wanting it to uh, to be a standout kind of piece that no one else will have or, or not very commonly uh, used if you're trying to sell your home and it's a higher end home, definitely adding a towel dryer to the laundry room or the bathroom. And it's not a really expensive product, no. is it? No, not necessarily. Not compared to, I mean, any other larger piece in your bathroom. Uh, I would say ranging from a couple hundred dollars and then you could spend up to 2000 if you're wanting the really high-end ones. Now, some people that want to do more than just a towel Mm -hmm. They'll put in a uh, food warmer, food warming drawer. Yeah. We've done that for people. So that is not recommended from the appliance brands that are providing those. Um, so, appliance, so they're just for pancakes. Yeah. So appliance <laughs> manufacturers do not uh, enjoy the towel or the t uh, food warmers in a bathroom. It's it's not necessarily meant for towels. Well, I'll, well, um, I, I, you're 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 probably right about that. Yeah. And I don't know that I've ever put one in a bathroom, but uh, <laughs> he's backtracking. I, I, could, I am. I'm, I'm crab walking here. <laughs> uh, but I what I, I think what I what I really had in mind was that there's a lot of people that will put towels in their in their uh, food warming drawer. It, it, it could be yeah, in the kitchen, in the or kitchen whatever. Yeah. yeah. So and, to run back and forth. Well, I mean, it's you know, if you can afford bit. one of these things, someone no, else will run back no. and forth with it. No, the towel dryer <laughs> is uh, not as expensive as you'd think. And um, definitely something to look at if you're wanting a standout master bathroom. Uh, I agree. Suite. I mean, you yeah. should have two. He should yeah. have one. I mean, you, can't, you shouldn't just have one, but you should have a his and her. You can. You can definitely do that. They make large ones that are quite tall, like four or five feet, so you can put multiple towels on there. Well, think yeah. about this. Let's just say, for instance, you have like an all-marble bathroom because if you're going to put a towel warmer in or something like that, it's because you're in that kind of a quality of a house, right? Mm -hmm. That price. Point. Yeah, it, they're definitely coming into the mid-level as well. For Are they? Yeah, if, if you there's more and so more So I could people. put my socks on them. Yes, you could. Because I've got to tell warm you, socks. there's nothing more luxurious than warm <laughs> socks on cold feet. <laughs> well, if you have marble, you know, marble's cold, so. <laughs> yeah, see there, see there. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's yeah. that's great. That's great information. Do you have a certain product, a certain uh, brand that you like? Well, of course, I'm touting Artos Westover, the brand that I represent, but there's other brands as well. Um, there's a few others out there. And, and again, I want to direct everyone to go to their showroom that's near them, their local showroom, and ask the uh, showroom personnel there of what brands they recommend. Uh, other than our toast, if you, but definitely ask for our toast. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I mean that, that's great advice. I appreciate it very much. Real quickly, we got a couple more minutes on, on this. I want to talk about uh, the glam fire fireplaces for a minute mm -hmm. because I have just been introduced to them by Amber, and they're really fantastic. They're real, real modern. They fit into sort of today's modern uh, uh, design that people are using. Uh, they're not they're not cheap because they're high quality, and so um, I think that uh, if you have a minute, go online. If you're building a house or remodeling a house, and you're doing something with your fireplace, go online and look up, or actually go to Unlacker, go to Amber's website, and look up Glamfire, 
and look at the, all the amazing uh, uh, different types and styles, and, and they have all kinds of different. They've got little ones and big ones and mm -hmm, some that go yeah. on the wall and some that are pits and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. The, but let's talk real quick about their fuel. The fuel intrigues yes. me that you can use them. Yeah. So bioethanol is uh, relatively new to this market. It's been around for a little while. But um, it's a liquid that is... Uh, biodegradable and it's uh, made from plants and you pour it in and it burns that's the fuel that burns and and it's non-toxic mm -hmm. you can burn it inside without worrying about ventilation yes so it does not produce smoke so there's lots of different avenues to create a fireplace or fire pit in an indoor outdoor setting that we're seeing more of with the doors that collapse in on each other mm -hmm. um, for the indoor outdoor patios um, and Another thing to think about is codes in our area because, for instance, Plano has a ordinance now where no wood burning fire pits in your backyard anymore. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I so forgot about that. Bioethanol is becoming more popular because on the coasts, we're going towards not as many wood burning fireplaces as before because of the CO2. And so this emissions. will meet that code change yes yeah the especially for outdoor use mm -hmm. uh it's you're not wood burning uh it's the bioethanol but it still produces heat so mm -hmm. very interesting well great yeah. product well thank you so much we're yeah. going to take a quick break and when we come back we're going to talk to chris uh cliff Barros from ibhs fortified building we'll be right back the hardest working and arguably most important system in our homes is our air conditioning and heating system. It heats the air, it cools the air, and it filters the air. That's why it's so critical to have it checked and maintained by the very best professionals available. It's time to contact Total Air and Heat at TotalAir.com. Get that system pruned and tuned. If you want to have the very best experience, you've got to hire the very best company. Total Air's employees are honest, well-trained, and thoroughly background checked. I never have to worry about sending their technicians out to my clients' homes. Family owned and operated for three generations, Total Air and Heat has been a fixture in North Dallas for over 60 years. Total Air is a proud dealer of the train air conditioning systems, and you know how hard it is to stop a train, so give them a call at 972-881-0020, that's 972-881-0020, or contact them at TotalAir.com today. Hey, Cliff. How are you, buddy? Do we have him? Uh, Cliff, it looks like we have you on the line. Uh, uh, hit is your, your mic working? Hit your microphone, bud. <laughs> Keep trying. Well, while, while we're waiting on Cliff to find his mic or, or get that working, well, let me just introduce him. Cliff uh, is with IBHS Fortified Building, and Fortified Building <clears throat> is a type of uh, construction technique. Uh, it's actually a certification you can get as a builder that uh, fortifies homes against natural disasters. So what they've done is they've uh, they built they build houses in a, this big air tunnel. There's 110 uh, fans in this tunnel. They build the house in the tunnel. And then they blow it down. It's like really fun. <laughs> blow it to smithereens to simulate a tornado or a hurricane. And then they develop um, techniques to prevent that for, or minimize that. You, certain, <clears throat> excuse me, certain uh, conditions, you can't eliminate it for sure. But you can sure minimize it. And the idea, and this is for the insurance companies, that was the whole point of this. And the idea of this is to keep so when you had up to like a cat three hurricane i think they can go to a cat three cliff will tell us um you can not completely lose your house and so one of the things that i think i thought would be a really good uh, subject uh this week would be to talk about with winter coming how can you go in and retrofit your house during the winter in the attic to help sort of mitigate damage that would be, say, from spring storms. And so uh, as soon as we can get Cliff on 
uh, get his mic work, <laughs> mic working or his sound, then we'll we'll have him on. One of the things that I um, I think that you can, I know you can do is you can go up in your attic, and you can add bracing. Uh, now all of this is you can hire someone to do it. Uh, it's, if you're not a DIY person, it's probably not the best idea not to hire someone else. If you're a DIY person and you're competent up in your attic, go up there and where your rafters come down to the top of the wall and they, it sort of makes a triangle where the ceiling joists are, you can add some bracing in there and you can, uh, but it's, you can nail the wood in, that's fine, but the real key to it is adding metal gussets on that wood to tie everything together. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to tie it together better than just nails. We want the metal brackets that hold everything together. And the whole idea of the fortified concept is that the, the uh, bracing or the fortified house goes from the roof all the way down to the foundation. So if you, if you really want to get extreme, I, I don't want to call it extreme, but if you want, really want to be thorough, then you would follow that down to the stud that's, that coincides with it and you'd go all the way down and you would put what are called hurricane brackets, which are little brackets that nail the, onto the stud, they nail onto the plate, which is what the studs nail to on the top and the bottom and then you want to make sure you have a bolt down into your foundation right in that vicinity and that starts tying everything together so that if a wind tries it the, the first thing that happens in a wind it tries to lift your roof off and the idea here is to prevent that from happening if we can minimize that then we can minimize a whole lot of the damage caused by high winds and uh, this is what fortified uh, building does the other thing you can do, uh, there's some techniques when you're building a house from the ground up or you're doing an addition, some things you can do uh, tying everything into the foundation actually better than what I've described. And um, I guess do we, we no uh, I'm, I'm still working you're to still, try okay. and get him on okay. the air. Okay. Um, so I have some uh, diagrams and things that we can show. Um, while Cliff, while we're trying to get Cliff on there, I'm going to distract Ziggy for a minute. Thanks, Ziggy. So this is called a, the, what they're doing is they're taking habitat homes and they're using this technique on the habitat homes, which I think is really fantastic. And you, and if you're, if you're, oh, you're there? Uh, it looks like we've got Cliff on the hey, line. Hey, buddy. Sorry about that. That's all I right. What happened. Hey. I'm on the road and sometimes when you, when I'm on the road, it just, uh, the, the mics don't know what happened. Well, welcome to the show. Sorry about that. That's okay. It's all right. So were you able to hear anything that I was saying? Yeah, you're doing a great job doing my job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Welcome to the show. How are you, buddy? I'm doing well. I appreciate it. I'm here in Texas with you. Are you really? Are you I, really? Uh, just outside of Corpus. Oh, so you're avoiding me. That's it. I just stay, uh, you know, over on the coast where it's pretty. You know? Yeah, that's right. But that that's where we would normally expect to find you would be on some coast somewhere. Uh, you know, Fortified actually is, it really can be uh, anywhere that has severe weather. Fortified can actually provide some protections that, you know, uh, you've got tornadoes that run through uh, large, you know, large swaths of the country. And obviously we, we're not going to do much for an F5 or an even F4, but Lots of folks on the when you have those big ones, you know, the storm is out here, and that's they have they have five parts only in here. Uh, so, but everybody outside F one, F two, certainly fortified is going to help offer a lot of protection in, in those situations. Really, it's just a high wind event at that point. Right. So, fortified starts with actually the roof. Yeah, and it's we've got three levels with the roof, and then we have gold and silver. Uh, the roof is. 80% of all insurance claims are roof related, right? So that's obviously where uh, the most damage is coming from. And yet what could be really pretty minor damage to a roof, some shingles blow off, it happens to rip up some of the underlayment, you know, the felt or whatever we've got under there. Uh, and then you have that gap between between the decking and water just pours through that. That's just, the, the gap has to be there. The guys aren't doing anything wrong when they put the roof on. 
uh, but it, it's just a gap. And so water finds a, the, the way into anything, you know, that I think we all know that if you just pour some water, it's going to find a hole. And, and you got these that are designed to be there. So fortified, the, one of the main parts of the fortified roof is making sure that we seal that gap. Um, we put some, there's some tape that can go over it. You talked about there's some areas here that get a good bit of snow. You get uh, ice and water shield, which is another another uh, system that's put on. We're gonna that. we're gonna we're gonna run up against our clock, um, and so I need to uh, I want to move this on because I have a couple of other things I wanted to address. As we've talked about all this before, and yeah. and we've got uh, the, and you can go to the fortified uh, fortified dot or what is it fortifiedhome.org. Excuse me. Fortifiedhome.org. Fortifiedhome.org, and you can look at diagrams of exactly how to do this and what to look for. That's exactly right. And mm -hmm. so, um, one one of the things I wanted to talk about today with you is how does a builder become a certified fortified contractor? Is that That's what they're called? Yeah, uh, it, it works a lot like you know any other. If you're going to be a malarkey roofer or, or a, Owens Corning Roofer, it works similar. You, you come to a training course that we provide. There are less than two days. We teach you kind of, the guys know pretty much what to do to build. It's just a couple of extra steps you got to take along the way to go from each different designation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you talked about the load path. We want to make sure that we get enough of the, of the anchors that they're using. You know, it doesn't sound like much, but using the right washer on those anchors mm -hmm. makes a world of difference. And the wind force is like they can actually pull it right over a rounded anchor. So we want to make sure we got the right squared off anchors, two by two, things like that, little things that, that just take it from being a good, a well-built house to a really strong house. It's just a couple of little steps. So um, this is this getting integrated into insurance requirements? Uh, not so much requirements since there, there are states that, and, and insurers that are providing discounts uh, for that in Alabama is required, the, the discounts are required, Oklahoma require, has a, an automatic discount if you do this. So there, there are some incentives uh, that are being sent, that are being seen across the country. I would think what, that's the Habitat House right there. Mm -hmm. I think that's a perfect example of what we've got in, in why insurance agents or insurance commissions are, are finding the value in it. That's a, a home where every every house around it has significant roof. So damage. that's not a new house. That's a house that went through the storm. That's that correct. Destroyed yeah, that, all that, those other houses. That's exactly right, and, and it's wow. a habitat house. That that one's actually a, built by Habitat for Humanity. So, so you that's know, impressive. Every, yeah, they have the, Everybody has this. You know, you think mitigation or, or resilience has to be expensive. That's a perfect example. It, it does not have to be expensive. No, not if it's habitat. <laughs> But it's really a mindset of um, and now, of course, I'm I build in Tornado Alley, so I get it. Um, yeah. And, and a lot of people do that are listening to this show. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of Fortified and, and a big supporter of it. How do people contact Fortified and what do they need to do to get more involved in this whole certification program? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple of different ways if you're a builder. You know, obviously, coming to the training is a great way to get all the information in a short period of time. You can go to our website. There's checklists that show a lot of it's prescriptive. You know, we tell you exactly what to do, and you do those things, and you can get a designation that says that you built this house fortified. Um, but if other, you know, all else fails, just send me an email. It's cliff at ibhs.org or cbarrow, sorry. Cbarrows.org. <laughs> Almost gave you the wrong email. That's okay. That's all right. I've but been yeah, trying. I've been we, writing the wrong email for you all week. <laughs> that's all right. We, we ended up all right once I got my mic working. We ended up okay. Well, but now this fortified program. This is not. This, uh, fortified is an organization. It's not. It's a nonprofit, right? Right. So IBHS is the Institute for Business Home Safety. We're actually uh, funded completely by the private insurance. Aid, uh, or industry, sorry. Uh, and they really are just trying to reduce risk uh -huh. across the country. And so in, in doing that, we were able to develop what essentially is like a building code, uh, just a prescriptive a way of looking at uh, what we can do when we're building houses to prevent damage down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, and we put those together and created this fortified, uh, the fortified program. 
the expense part on that is uh, we do require that anybody who's doing it documents it and verifies that they're doing the things that we say. Otherwise, we don't want to issue a, a designation that has some expense to it. And that's uh, but that money actually goes to the third party verifier. It doesn't really okay. come to us. We make thirty dollars off each house. Well, Cliff, I really appreciate you spending some time with us this morning. As always, it's really educational and really, I think, helpful to our listeners and, and our viewers, uh, understanding that there are ways to improve the way that we're building homes and protect their investments. I appreciate you having me. I mean, you and I talked on the phone the other day. If anybody's, if you've lived through a storm, the aftermath of the storm, you've yeah. seen what the devastation can be, you understand we've got to do better. I That's think we right. can do better. No, absolutely. I'm on board with that 100%. Thank you so much. Thank and you. And have a great day. Thanks, Cliff. Cliff Sorry Barros. for the uh, issues with the mic. Have oh, a good day. No problem, brother. All right. uh, Cliff Barros with IBHS Fortified Building. Um, we're going to take a quick break. and we come back, we're going to talk to Mike McGrath with Elevating Systems. And we're talking innovators and other things. We'll be right back. Sometimes it's a question of do I call or don't I call the foundation repair company? But what if I tell you that I know a foundation repair company that will tell you if you don't need foundation repair? That's right. Hargrave and Hargrave Foundation Repair has been in business for over 50 years and they know the difference. One of the last family owned foundation repair businesses in North Texas. Not only are they honest, they know what causes your foundation to move and they know how to fix it. Don't be duped by flying fly-by-night foundation companies that provide shortcuts and messy fixes, call Hargrave and Hargrave Foundation Repair at 972-442-3415 at the first sign of trouble. Hargrave uses the Chance Helical Pier System exclusively because it's the highest quality, most reliable helical pier money can buy. 972-442-3415 or contact them at HargraveFoundation.com. Welcome back to Remodel Revolution. I'm here with my good friend, Mike McGrath. Mike is a elevator, a residential elevator specialist. His company, Elevating Systems, and uh, in full disclosure, I do work with them. <laughs> so I, they, they've been really good to me, uh, recommended me, and taught me how to build elevator shafts, which is really sort of a, a it's a very niche precise uh, type of building that not just anybody can be trusted with. I'm sure Mike McGrath will agree with that. Hello, Mike. <laughs> well, good morning, Alex. <laughs> you agree with that, don't I you? Do. Yeah, I yeah, do. okay. I you agree better. completely. Yeah, there that. you go. <laughs> so only a special few supremely awesome people can do this. That's a very firm pat on your back, and I admire <laughs> you for doing that. <laughs> But uh, it, it is a it is an, uh, a specialty phase of construction, whether it's new home manufacturing or new home building or renovation work. There are qualities and characteristics of an elevator shaft that really have to be concise in yeah. order for a safe, reliable, long-term operation. Well, and not to mention that uh, all of the codes just changed. They just changed this year, and boy, are they stringent. They are. I mean, there's no loosey goosiness to it anymore. So let's talk about when you have an elevator constructed and you're, or an elevator shaft. Uh, so we have two parts to an elevator, a residential, ele any elevator, residential, commercial. You have a shaft, which houses the elevator, a uh, cab, an operating system. And then you have the cab and operating system. You have two parts to this, this process. And they both have to be. Uh, they both have to marry up and be done correctly to be successful and pass the state inspection, which is the key. We have a, an abundance of state codes which apply to the installation of residential elevators. And we have a responsibility to make sure that when the installation is complete, it meets all of these codes. Um, so we work in conjunction with the general contractor, which more often than not is you, Alex, <laughs> and we make sure that everything is going to comply. Uh, the construction of the elevator shaft is left to the GC, but we supply the information so that the general contractor can build the elevator shaft to the specific size it needs to be. So he's just got to follow the directions. 
Uh, essentially, uh, there are some theoretical. There, there are some critical uh, items such as the door placement yeah. and the location of the door, as and where it sits in the door jam. The recent code changes has brought us to the point where we have to inset the door, or the general contractor has to inset the door so that it sets flush with the elevator shaft wall so there can be no refuge space. Okay, so what Mike just said in English <laughs> <laughs> is that there cannot be a space. You have two doors. You have the door on the elevator shaft, and you have, pardon me, folks, I'm getting my, I'm crying. Um, you have to uh, have the, uh, you have the, the actual elevator cab, and it's got a door, and then you have the door to enter the elevator cab, which is, looks like a regular door in your house. And there can only be a certain amount of space between those two doors. Correct. And that's by code. Now, it used to be like three inches. It used to be three, three inches. Now, depending on the car gate you use, it can be up to three quarters of an inch. We strive okay, for let's, zero. Okay, let's say that again. It, now it can be a maximum of three quarters, three of, an quarters inch. of an inch. So we went from a three inch gap to a three quarter inch gap uh, because I guess our kids are getting skinnier. <laughs> well, a little doggy it's, feet. It's, 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 it's really, it's, you know, we're chuckling, but it's not a funny matter. What yeah. was happening was kids were finding their way into that refuge space really? and hiding. I did not know that. The gates of old were made with panels that were hinged with vinyl hinges. And the kids were able to get inside that, and with their little hiney, they'd push that and bow that door and pull the door closed so they could hide. Like oh, hide no. Oh. Someone would call, the car would take off, yeah. and it would be a tragic right. situation. Yeah. So this is what's yeah. led to this code okay. change. It's a, it's a really good change. Blame the it's children. It's a very yeah. positive change. It's a difficult <laughs> one for us, but the end result is positive. Well, so would this come into play, especially if you purchase a home, an older home with an older elevator that has the gap then, and then having to redo the elevator so that it meets standard that's there, now There available. are methods to decrease that gap. Mm -hmm. um, we install what are called door baffles, and basically they're a panel that are about three inches thick that we install on the door so when it closes, it alleviates that gap. Mm -hmm. gotcha. and, we, and we've done, we've done similar <laughs> things ever since we've put them in. Sure. Even because there was, um, you, you're trying to, we were trying to use a standard size door jam to go in a spot that can't take a standard size door jam. So we've had to sort of rethink how we do these things. And not only, uh, and this is a reason I'm spending all this time on this. This is a, the, probably the most dangerous part of owning an elevator is if someone actually got in there. Right. Um, I, I mean, there's never going to be enough refuge space in there for an adult, a full grown mm -hmm. person. But full grown people aren't playing hide and seek. Children right. are, and we have to protect our children. Right, right. And that's where this goes to. Even cats try to get into little spaces. Well, they can't reach the doorknob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. In, I've known some cats. You know, in theory, they should be able to open that door anyway. Right. But, uh, but actually, actually, they can do that. So let's move on. So um, elevators are. Um, come in basically two different types of operating systems. Actually, there's three. Is there three? Um, okay. there, there's one that is a, uh, uh, I would call it an original design, and it's called a winding drum elevator. And it's simply a winch system that actually hoists by cable the elevator car up and then releases and lowers the elevator car down the shaft. Those are not as prominent today as some of the other better technologies that we can apply. Uh, one is which a lot of people will probably recognize as a hydraulic elevator. A hydraulic elevator has its applications and they're very smooth to operate. They're very quiet to own. I always tell the homeowner that the hydraulic, and if you look at it, uh, we had a picture of one on a minute ago, it, it's like a forklift. It's essentially a forklift built into your house. Yeah. It's the same system. And so um, you have hydraulic, you know, hydraulics or pistons, right. pistons that are just have a whole lot of fluid in them. And they can push that thing up. But it's super smooth, super quiet, it is. super dependable. It is. 
Um, it's marginally more expensive than our midline product, which is our inline gear drive. Our inline gear drive is a unit that uh, uses a gear driven two horsepower motor driving two industrial size sprockets with industrial chain linked chains that go from a counterweight stack to the car frame and that gearbox runs those chains and that just goes up and down back and forth now there's minimal components with this so you have a lesser chance of error if you will or, or, or wear or, or failure failure of some uh, kind. it's kind of a fail-safe system when it with the two chains but where i'm going with this is the hydraulic unit while it has its advantages still brings hydraulic oil into your home and if any of us who have worked with anything mechanical know eventually a hydraulic cylinder will leak you will have oil in your home mm -hmm. and that's not an avenue well, that, that i choose to travel my my the thing that i'm impressed with and now i've been doing these for it seems to me around 10 years now and um we started out when i started out we were doing the drum and cable thing and i hated them <laughs> you know i just i would i would tell the homeowner i'd get the hydraulic because the drum and cable was so loud and awful and the hydraulic was so nice but those were the choices we had back then yes and then they came out with this direct drive or inline gear drive. inline gear drive which is not as expensive as a hydraulic correct can all be contained inside the shaft and and i mean and it's quiet and it's dependable and it's nice less maintenance yeah yeah so that, those are the ones i like <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely so um how and those are the ones I like, and not to steal your, your airspace there, Alex, mm -hmm. but they're about 95% of what we're installing these Is days. Is that right? Yeah. They're very well, they, well received. Well, they should be. They should be. So there's all types of, uh, unfortunately, we ran a little long on our last segment, so we just have a couple more minutes. Um, there's all kinds of, fi there, well, not all kinds, but there are a couple of financial incentives or tax incentives you can get if you're going to put an elevator in. If there are, I have no, that. no, where you can, if you have a doctor's. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. If you're, if you're installing an elevator and there's a medical necessity, then the state will waive the sales tax on the project, which can be substantial. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, especially if you want to get that high dollar elevator. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's one thing to know because people are always asking about that. Now, uh, real fast, what happens if you're in it and it gets stuck? in between floors technically it shouldn't get stuck between floors because any of our products have a battery lowering system right so if the power goes out the car should automatically go to that backup power and lower to the bottom floor okay if on that rare occasion the power's been out you've been away from the home the battery backup has been discharged all the way down so it can't operate the car there is a manual brake release which someone can release by hand and the car will drift but not out. the person inside but the not car. the person inside no <laughs> so we so there's there's fail safe safe systems and in, in each one of our cars we recommend that when we install an elevator it gets a live phone line and each one of our cars comes with a phone. So anybody that's in the car should be able to contact anybody. For Keep your cell phone with you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, we really appreciate you being in here today with us and taking the time out this morning. It's always fun. And, and uh, I think that uh, as we build denser and taller, that uh, residential elevators are becoming more necessary uh, for people over 30. <laughs> you know, there's an old adage, real estate is less expensive if you go up than if yeah, you go right. up. So we're going to be looking at multi-story homes right. a lot. I mean, from four-story homes to two-story homes. As people stay in their homes a little bit longer as they get older, there becomes the application. As people spend large amounts of money on their home, they're going to want to live in it longer, so yeah. they plan ahead. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. You're welcome. I look forward to coming back. Oh, awesome, awesome. Thank you. It's always fun. Hey, folks. Um, if you are looking for a remodeler, a, if you're going to do a room addition, if you're going to build a new home, if you're going to do just an update or remodel your home, give me a call, Alex Guthrie at 469-446-8508. Contact me, alex at alexguthrie.net or alex at remodelrevolutionradio.com. 
give us a shot. I think you'll like us. Uh, we've been in business around 40 years, almost my entire adult life, if I lie about my age a little. And um, uh, we, we love working with people. We love remodeling, and we love doing challenging projects. So give us a call. Um, Amber Teague. Yes. We have a five minutes for 2020 trends. All right. And so I, uh, I found this, and I blew a gasket. <laughs> <laughs> you found an article. I found an article, and it's from Marina Davalos, if I said that right. Uh, Marina, I hope I said your name correctly. And this came from a remodeling, uh, online remodeling magazine, and it's 2020 Trends. And I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to be upfront with everybody, I've uh, done these. I've been doing them for two or three years, and I'm sick of them. But it is the 2020 <laughs> trends. <laughs> because every house I walk in now has these these items. So let's go mm -hmm. real quickly through each one. I want to get your thought. Bead yeah. board and ship lap and subway tile. Yeah, so what the article brought out, um, and again, these people are from, uh, she interviewed two people from uh, Cape Cod and New York City. Uh, so one was with HG Mag HGTV Magazine in New York, and the other is a designer in Cape Cod. So um, what they're finding is Shiplap is going to the East Coast now. We were kind of in the, the forefront of this because of Miss Joanna Gaines is here in Waco. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been seeing this for a while. I've been <laughs> seeing it since the 1970s when I got in this business, <laughs> and I was remodeling houses that were built in the 1930s. So I'm all... I'm all good with ship lap. Well, it did bring out that um, different from the 1970s ship lap or wood paneling is that now it's more of a natural tone. And we've kind of discussed this before is these lighter colors, uh, lighter, more natural wood tones are, are coming into style. And I refer to them as the 90s wood. <laughs> as <laughs> if that's old. All the light old. colored uh, honey woods we're in style then. I knew it was going to be and, great uh, having a millennial on this show. <laughs> Think of the Friends set. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Friends, so, is that a show? Yes. <laughs> so um, so the, they did bring out that the lighter tones and more of the industrial farmhouse look and not the traditional farmhouse look that they're adapting on the East Coast um, from what we've seen here in Texas in the last couple of so years. So you're saying that Texas is the the uh, starter of the trend. Texas we, is the front. We were. Yeah, yeah. for this particular trend, yes. I would say <laughs> because of the Gaines family. Um, Let's talk about geometric that. patterning. Uh, mm. I'm seeing a lot of that. And you know, that to me, and I love it. I loved you. Th and th these are tiles that we're using now that are, some of them are hand painted. Uh, they started out being hand painted. It's the only way you could get them, but they might be a six sided tile. They might be mm -hmm. uh, some odd and size. And 3D. And 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of 3D. And I've been using a bunch of that stuff and I love it. It's super challenging. Now, make sure that your tile guy knows how to set them. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you take a section of that out and lay the pattern out so you know exactly how it's going to be cut and laid if you have a small wall space in particular, like a backsplash, yeah. so that your pattern works out right. Yeah, and know that if it is 3D, that the uh, the tiles are going to be sticking out of the wall a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so what on the edges of your backsplash, on your beginnings it's and the exactly ends. exactly what we run into. Yeah, how yeah. is it going to look? Yeah. Because that 3D tile is going to stick out from the wall more than usual. So are you going to do the metal system where well, it's on the side? And, and that has been a problem on a couple of projects I've mm -hmm. been on where they they only know how to use the metal edging. Mm -hmm. You know, And I don't know if it's the tile people or the designers just are going, oh, it's put the metal edging on there. Yeah. Well, when you've got a 3D tile and you have little ridges on it, that little metal edging doesn't accommodate that. Yeah. And so you have to find a better way, which mm -hmm. is fine with me because it'll look better. But think about that when you're picking that tile out. Or the edging has to meet the sides of the tile. Well, what I've yeah. done, and I and I have pictures on, if you go to my website, uh, my uh, some, one of my sites, um, <laughs> I'm not sure which one. <laughs> um, I have pictures of 
a house that we did and we actually bevel cut all those tiles so that pattern met up. It was hard to do, but it mm. really, really looked good. Okay. Well, that's as far as we're going to get with that. Next week, we'll pick that up and we'll get a little further on it. I want to thank Ziggy Becker for putting up with me today because I was a real pain in the you know what. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Cliff Barros, and thank you, Mike McGrath, and thank you, Amber Teague, for taking time out to be with me today. It's always fun having you here. <laughs> I love having you here. Thank you. Thank you. And next week, uh, we'll be back at same time, same place. I hope you have a great week. This is Alex Guthrie checking out from Remodel Revolution. You can catch Remodel Revolution anytime. Follow the show on the website, RemodelRevolutionRadio.com, or on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, using the handle at Remodel Revolution Radio. You can always listen to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and tune in. And watch the show anytime on YouTube.